There's one thing that Boruto has in common with Naruto and that is how it uses Japanese and Hindu mythology as a guide when creating certain characters and also the manifestation of certain abilities. We can see this especially in the creation of the Otsutsuki clan members thus far. With Kaguya being heavily influenced by the story of Princess Kaguya, Momoshiki's character being that of Momotaro who is ironically a hero in Japanese folklore and also Kinshiki who was influenced by Kintaro who was a folklore hero similar to Momotaro. The list goes on with Shibai, Ishiki, and Urashiki, but I think you guys get the point. This of course leads us back to Sarada who recently awakened her Mangekyo Sharengan in chapter 80 of Boruto. This is very significant since the abilities of the Sharengan and the Sharengan itself seems to have a direct link to one specific mythology. Well at least when it comes to Sasuke's bloodline. That of course being the story of Izanagi and his children. You see, it's said that Amaterasu, Tsukunomi, and Susanoo came into existence when Izanagi had a bath in a river to purify himself after visiting the underworld in a failed attempt to rescue his deceased wife, Izanami. It's said that Amaterasu was born when Izanagi washed his left eye, Tsukunomi was born when he washed his right eye, and Susanoo was born when he washed his nose. Izanagi then appointed Amaterasu the ruler of the plane of heaven, Tsukunomi the ruler of night, and Susanoo the ruler of the seas. As you guys have figured out by now, all these names of the deities mentioned above are also names of abilities specific to the Sharengan. Amaterasu who is known as the Sun Goddess is also the name of Itachi's black flame said to burn as hot as the sun. Tsukunomi who is known as the Moon God is also the name of Itachi's second Mangekyo ability which allows him to cast a powerful Genjutsu that alters the target's perception of time. Then we have the Storm God known as Susano, which also refers to a humanoid avatar readily available to any Uchiha who has mastered both of their Mangekyos. Now when it comes to Sarada's influence, Amaterasu would be your first bet since she is the Sun Goddess and while well, Sarada's Mangekyo is shaped like the sun. That would be the obvious conclusion. But for some reason I don't think it's that simple. It kind of feels too easy, not to mention the fact that it's overused. Now I'm not saying that Amaterasu itself is completely useless since it does have its place against the lower tiered characters who can't absorb jutsu, which likely means that these are characters who are barely relevant to the power system within Boruto. So I can't really see how this would help Sarada in any way. And normally when a character gets a power up of this magnitude with the Mangekyo being specifically the natural peak of any Uchiha not modified into oblivion, that power up should mean something and should challenge the current power structure in a meaningful way. That is why I decided to dig a bit deeper and this is where I found Amanozaku, the daughter of Susanoo, the storm god himself. It said that Amanozaku, which means heaven opposing everything, is a monstrous goddess mentioned in the Japanese text, which states that she originated when Susanoo let his own ferocious spirit build up inside him until he vomited her out. So similar to how Amaterasu, Tsukunomi, and Susanoo himself were created when Izanagi washed his body in a purification ritual, Amanozaku was created by the bodily fluids of a sickly Susanoo. Now based on what I've gathered, Susanoo and Amaterasu do have other children, most of which they share together but Amanozaku stands out specifically due to her abilities, personality, and story beats. Just to give a vague description, this deity is described as having a furious temper, a beastly head with a long nose, long ears, and great fangs so strong that they can chew metal blades ragged. Amanozaku is also known to be a goddess that goes against conformity and does the opposite of what is expected by society and societal norms. Now similar to other deities from Japanese folklore, Amanozaku was adapted into this game called Shin Megami Tensei V Bosses. I guess the V means 5, apparently. Now this game featured a modified version of the character who does keep her origin as the offspring of Susanoo but with some added qualities. It's said that Amanozaku is a curious demon looking for someone and volunteers to stick with the protagonist of the game. It's said that when she first came into being her power went wild and she fled, eventually wishing to reunite with her father Susanoo. She's fierce and rebellious but she's nothing but helpful fitting the goddess of rebellion and defiance against societal norms. As I mentioned earlier, she's looking for her father Susanoo but she's also searching for her soulmate, later admitting that this person is actually the protagonist of the game. I'm sure you guys have already picked up on the similar story beats I've mentioned above. Similar to Sarada whose first arc in Boruto was her longing for and searching for her father Sasuke, that's also a driving factor in Amanozaku's story, along with her lusting after the protagonist with 
within the game similar to what we've seen with Sarda countless times in the Boruto manga. The game also has a side quest titled The Destined Leader that features Amanozaku which also ties into Sarda's Okage story arc within Boruto. This might be a reach but if it works, it works. What I do know for a fact is that 95% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel which is absolutely insane. Once again if you guys are enjoying the content hit subscribe and let's aim for 15k by the end of this month. I think that should be possible. Now what I found most interesting are the abilities used by these characters in the game itself. According to the game sheet she's a fire, ice and electricity user similar to Sarda. Well aside from the ice of course. It also says that she has resistance to all sleep, mirage, poison confusion, charm and seal ailments, which could explain why she's immune to omnipotence and Ada's charm ability. Of course, this means nothing in the universe of Naruto so there will be another explanation as to why. This is just likely where the idea itself stems from. Now the most important of these abilities is her heavenly counter skill which is basically a dark type counter whenever she is hit with a physical attack. In the actual game itself, this ability is just shown as her just countering any attack done to her with a dark energy attack which deals damage. Naturally, this doesn't mean that this is what Sarda's main Mangeki ability will be. That was never the case for the other Mangeki abilities such as Amaterasu and Tsukunomi that were derived from the other gods, so I don't think that will be the case here either. How I see it is that her ability could be somewhat similar to Full Counter used by Meliodas in Seven Deadly Sins. Full Counter itself is stated to enable its wielder to reflect attacks aimed at them back to their enemies, but also with more than double the power. Therefore, the stronger the opponent's powers are, the stronger the user's power becomes. Now, this does sound absolutely broken and that's because it is. We have to realize that Sarda has no natural way of actually being physically on par with the top tiers of the verse, unless some unforgivable power cliffing takes place which again that is that is possible so Sarda's only hope of actually being relevant to the current meta is by having an ability that allows her to scale to them without being as strong physically her having an ability which allows her to reflect physical or chakra based attacks at twice the power would easily do that now of course this power must come with drawbacks that matches the strength of the ability itself this could be similar to full counter where the user cannot initiate any attacks themselves and they would not be able to reflect attacks if the opponent does not allow them to read the nature or timing of their attacks. Or it could just stick with Naruto's go-to where it just requires a lot of chakra to maintain and puts a lot of strain on the eyes themselves. This of course brings me to the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan since a lot of people have no idea what it is and how it's different from the regular Mangekyo Sharingan Sarada just awakened. You see, you can only awaken the Eternal Mangekyo Sharingan by taking the eyes of another clansman and implanting them into your eye sockets. Well at least that's what's stated in the Manga. In the anime it says that it can be done between siblings and parents, not the clan at large. Either way, Sasuke is the only pure-blooded Uchiha left and he only has one eye. Sarda needs both to awaken her eternal manga Kyosharengan since that is the sacrifice required by the Shikigami. Also, Sasuke already has the eternal manga Kyosharengan since he took Itachi's eyes after he died. Doing this basically does what the name suggests, it makes the eye eternal so you never go blind and also relieves the stress as well. Now you could just ignore the show itself and the evidence provided in the actual series and say that Sarda can just take the one Sasuke has and awaken a new EMS which is possible but highly unlikely. You could also say that Sarda can just take one of the Shinichiya clone eyes which is also unlikely since she isn't a psychopath or you could also say that she will just somehow find Sasuke's old eyes that were in a lab Sasuke partially destroyed back in Shippuden. All of these possibilities, well, are possible, but they're extremely unlikely. So the more likely case is that she will just get 100 healings coupled with methodic regeneration, which will just repair the damage done to the eyes over time. What I also wanted to touch on is her Susano, which most of you guys wanted to know if I think the color will be pink, which I think would be fine. However, I think a white Susano would be awesome and it's also linked back to Amonozaku since when she transforms into her higher form, her hair turns into white. So I can see how that can translate to the color of her Susano if she is the character that Sarda is based on. Now I know that a lot of people might call BS since some of the things I mentioned in this video is from a game adaptation, but as I pointed out in my 
video about the mythology behind Ishiki, most of his abilities and the fighting style he uses in the actual series was taken directly from a game which adapted the deity known as Sukina Ikona. So the precedent for it is already there, you just need to seek it. Now this really has nothing to do with Amanazaku in any way whatsoever but I do believe that it's possible that Sarda gets the ability to rewind time since aside from burning stuff, the sun is also used to tell time, especially in the old days. So I could see how that could translate into a time manipulation ability for her second Mangekyo which is very similar to Madara's ability shown in the Ninja Storm games. Now I could go on and on about what abilities I think Sarda could have but why should I when you guys can go watch my other videos. I'll have my video on the true origins of Code's White Karma linked in the end cards along with my video about Boruto's new Shinjutsu ability and ascension into godhood so check them out and let me know your thoughts on those as well. But before you leave this one don't forget to like the video and drop your comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.